welcome to the FSF Popcast Live Show. Hello, kids and cadets. Welcome to the FSF Popcast Live Show. Look at you with the admin powers adding yourself to the screen like that. Look at me go. Look at you go. Uh, well, we're hoping to have a little bit of fun with you guys. <laughs> yeah, with the power. Look at me go. Um, we're hoping to have some fun with you guys tonight. We're going to talk about shows that have been canceled over the years, been rebooted uh, or brought back in some other form of media, whether it was a book, a comic book, a movie. So maybe the show itself wasn't rebooted on another network. Maybe it's just like one of the examples uh, that we're going to talk about tonight is a, movie, a TV show that was canceled far too early and brought back for a movie uh, that didn't answer all the questions, but you know, kind of answered some of the questions. You did make it, Jesse. Look at you. Go. Hello, Jesse. <coughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's that's what we're doing tonight. This is the show, canceled and rebooted. So we're going to talk about a few of these things now. Of course, if you have thoughts or opinions about any of the shows that we're talking about, uh, please feel free to put your comments in the notes and we'll try to get them up on the screen as much as we possibly can. And if there's a show that we haven't covered, throw it in there and we'll talk about it. Uh, this is a, this is a community conversation that may be a hint for one of the shows that we'll talk about later. Uh, let's see. Uh, Grand Zero says, Oh good. I love it. When we cover this. Yeah, this is a fun topic. Uh, hello to you as well. And Ben is unable to make it tonight. So, uh, we're not sure when they're, um, what their schedule looks like, but, uh, they've had a bit of, you know, a little bit of a rough day. So we're letting them, uh, just, just have the night off and, and relax. So family first and health first. That's what we kind of, we kind of push around here. So, uh, let's see, Tim, one pride, just saying. Go Lions. All right. Uh, and Jesse says, how dare you, Ben? I kid. I kid. Yeah, he's had a they've had a rough one today. So we're we're just letting them enjoy their their evening as much as they can. So. All right. Well, hey, let's uh, let's get into it. And by doing that, before we can do that, we have to say thank you to uh, our show partners, because without them. Kathleen, do we do any of this without them? No. No. OK, no. good answer. <laughs> she's like oh you're talking to me okay no no we don't do that i'm here uh, i promise i just am very scrambled I'll, I'll get there i understand uh but yeah so uh these are the our show partners these are the guys that help us week in week out put our show on the air storylines they help us with our, our shorts our reels uh our tiktoks any of those things that you see those small videos they help us edit those and get those ready for you guys to be able to see an amazing company uh, to work with uh, then, of course, there is TCT, where fandom meets fashion. They have a lot of uh, uh, really cool nerd wear, which I'm not wearing one of their nerd shirts tonight. I'm wearing one of my own nerd shirts tonight uh, that I designed. But they but, do make them extra cool when we do wear theirs. Yeah, it is. And they've got, uh, especially if you live in like the Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky uh, areas, there's another state to the south of us that only has four letters. Uh, and it's four letters for a good reason. Number of astronauts. Yeah, and presidents. Because everybody's trying to get the heck out of that state. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's, they've got some really cool localized uh, stuff. But like I said, I'm wearing one of my own shirts today. This is, uh, you know, Ric Flair and Wu-Tang combined for Wu-Tang. Anyway. Uh, and if you're, you know, Wu-Tang is for the kids, everyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, uh, uh, level up savers, of course, uh, because they're the only lightsaber out there that's guaranteed to be better than a stick. And, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. John says, it's nice to see the pretty one on screen again. Not you, Tim. Rude. Sorry. I'm over here with the, wait. Okay. So Tim's shirt, your Wu-Tang joke is literally a joke that is older than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I had to look it up. Yeah, 1991. Wu-Tang is for the kids. Wu-Tang. It's only a year older than me. That's not terrible. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I may have to, Crusher says, I may have to hit them up because it gets hard doing everything for the pockets. It, it does. 
It and does. I tell you what, uh, Jesse, if you want uh, introduction to them, I'll introduce you to Robbie, the guy that I work with at uh, Storylines. I can't say enough good things about Robbie and the crew over there. They are amazing to deal with. Um, but yeah, and it does. Uh, editing is remarkably difficult work sometimes, John says. It is. And fortunately, he has me now. Yes, he what? He has his own little apprentice. Yeah. I've 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 been I've been learning it. I've been learning are, the hard stuffs. Are you are you the editing acolyte? I am an editing acolyte. I, I, I'm actually getting to a point where I feel confident and comfortable in, in doing some of the things that John used to be able to. That I, I was like, oh, I can't do that. Only John can do that. You're still fuzzy. I know. I'm just <laughs> going with it at this point. We're going to pretend that this is the internet in the early 90s, and Kathleen is in interesting crap quality. Uh, Tim is not wearing a cap today. This is true. I am not wearing a cap today. Um, His hair looks fantastic. Well, thank you for not even trying. This was literally me going and walking away. So uh, that four-letter state has a city that literally has gone to the dog. The dog. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, I am the editing sidekick. I am okay with this. And Jesse says, very true, John. She, yeah, she does it all. She is, she is the one handed bandit over there. The one man band, the one man show. I, I don't know exactly what I'm going for here, but I think Jesse understands. And that's all I really care about at this point. All right, let's, uh, let's get into it here. So first off, I, I, I decided that I, these are in no particular order after the first one. The first one I put in was because this is the one that still bugs me to this day. And I think of any time uh, any nerd says, oh, a show that was canceled far too early. Kathleen, what show was canceled far too early and then made into a movie? Firefly. Bingo. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows what you're talking about, Tim. That's why it's provocative. <laughs> Uh, Trumbull, uh, no, I that is not a something about Mary hairstyle, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, no. I should not have done the comment and then taken a drink. <laughs> you did that oh. in opposite order, that's fantastic. Ow, that hurt my nose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, scary. so Firefly is a, is a show, is a Joss Whedon show, uh, and so as much as Joss Whedon may be a tool bag of of wrenches uh, in this sack of human life. Uh, he is a genius in some respects. I mean, the, the show, personally, he may be a jerk, but show-wise, the man's a genius. Firefly is genius work. And Fox, being Fox, was like, hey, this show's not good enough. We're going to cancel it after 14. And and uh, they came back, was it two years later, and made Serenity and and uh, although Serenity does help kind of close out the story, the, you can see in both the TV show and the movie that there's plenty of time in other places and spaces for Firefly to where it could have continued. Hey. hey. Look at you blinking into HD like that. I'm like, what is going on with my camera today? For some reason, because, and I, I know why now that I say for some reason, because John logged me into his admin account. So, so for it, Defaulted to the 420 camera instead of the 1080. It, it. Words, words, words is hard, dude. It has <laughs> been. It's been a. It's been a, uh, a lot. Uh, uh, but yeah, John says I didn't know Firefly existed until after I saw Serenity. I didn't yeah. know. Well, I knew that they both existed, but I didn't watch them honestly until the year that doesn't count. Uh, yeah, I just, I just had no interest in watching it for whatever reason. I was like, it was a show that only lasted 14 episodes. How good can it be? Fantastic. And then I swore at Fox for a good solid couple of weeks because I was like, this show's fantastic. How is this getting canceled? But alas, yeah. it was canceled and brought back as a movie. Now Serenity is a, a very good movie. It's an amazing movie. I think the only thing I don't like about Serenity is that it is hard to find on any streaming services. Oh, I thought you meant with the story itself. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, my only I issue like the with story. the story itself is poor Wash. 
Yeah. The rest of it's fine. Yeah. It got canceled. How good it can, can it be? The common cry of the internet this month. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. Don't you worry. That's coming around. Uh, let's see. Uh, Granzier says Fox hated Firefly so much. They played the episodes out of order. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they really screwed that show over uh, really, really hard. And I, I did the same thing. I watched Firefly on a marathon in, in, in back in 2020, year, the year that wasn't. I sat down, I think it was on Hulu at the time. Mm -hmm. And I watched episode after episode after episode. And I, I was like, I'm hooked. I'm like, so when does, when does season two start? And that's when I found out there was no season two. Uh, I, I love the fact that even Alan Tudyk uh, still mocks this show. Not the show itself, but the fact that it got canceled. Somebody was talking about having just discovered Firefly on Threads the other day. And he's like, wait till they find out about season two. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even even in Con Man, they oh, that's genius. joke about yeah. it. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen the series Con Man, starring Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion, and uh, there's Sean guest Astrid. spots in yeah. There's guest Maybe. spots from all the people in, in Firefly are actually in that show. Mm -hmm. It's it's Felicia it's Day's amazing. It. Yeah, it's. I relate to Felicia Day's character in that show way too much. <laughs> I love the fact that she keeps showing up in the same exact clothes that Alan Tudyk is wearing without him like telling mm -hmm. her. It's fantastic. Honestly, so like, and and you know the internet is is a very large and crazy place, but. Absolutely. <laughs> I know, yeah. Poor shot. Felicia Day's first scene in Con Man when she had eaten something bad and is super embarrassed about how horrible the bathroom smells as Alan Tudyk has now walked in. I, in that moment, did the, yep, I understand her. I love this. <laughs> this girl's got tummy problems, okay? Jesse, it's you know, forgivable, yeah, but we, we do know you need to fix this. Yes. Uh, no spoilers for Firefly. <laughs> and I do, oh my God, I love it. That was one of my mm -hmm. favorite things ever in Castle. I'm dressed like a space cowboy. Yeah. Uh, that's just, Castle's such a good show too. Oh, there was something There's a show else. that got canceled, but didn't get brought back, but that's an amazing show. Well, and so. it also, it, it jumped the shark as well. Oh, quite a, well, quite a bit the last the last season or two. I mean, I don't want to speculate as to what was going on. There's rumors of this character having a problem with that character and yada, yada, yada. And I don't want to get into any of that because I wasn't there. I don't know. Um, but the last season especially felt very rushed. Especially the last it, few episodes of the last, the last season. It, didn't it? It was on air during the writer's strike too. Mm -hmm. When everything got crapped. Hey, don't worry, Jesse. We're going to talk about that other one, too. So Firefly and Stargate, you need to add them both to your... <laughs> shark and freak. That's something different, John. That's a different shark. Freaking, no, but like even... Laser beams. I, I know this is not tonight's topic, but Castle and then specifically, like, I feel like it should almost get count counted as being canceled and rebooted was Bones because they had such a fantastic storyline going with the, the Gormagon. And then the mm -hmm. writer strike happened, and they killed that plot line because it was yeah. supposed to be a multi-season arc. And they that season got cut in half, and so they chopped the Gormagon series. And well, it was a, a lot of things. Show. Yeah, a lot of things from that writer strike did not fare well. No, because they went into it with one arc, and they came out of it like, okay, well, we're we're just gonna go with what we got available, and yeah. So, no, I agree with you 100% on that. Still better 100%. on that one. Uh, I loved the, the Who Civil War brown coats and Firefly. It was maybe only on sci fi, but that pulled you. Yeah, a little bit for sure. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to our next our next one. This is, like I said, from here on out, there's no particular order or rhyme or reason. As It was just like I was going through and going, oh, yeah, that one should be on the list. Yeah. So, and as a matter of fact, I forget which one's next. So, uh, I'm glad you have a oh, list. I'm. Yeah, if only I had made a list. <laughs> uh, but the show Arrested Development, now that was on Fox for quite a while and then got brought back on Netflix, I think for two seasons. You know, they had talked about make, perhaps making a movie, but 
as of as of yet, it's just a series. So mm -hmm. um, I think it is only two seasons on Netflix because that's very much Netflix. Oh, yeah, the great bigger plot. Yeah. 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 My wife would agree with you on all the Bones conversation. She's a big Bones fan. So uh, does Sliders qualify here? Oh, it was I don't know that it was ever brought back, though. They didn't bring it back, which is sad because I actually just started watching that one not that long ago. And that's yeah. actually a lot of fun. I've it, actually never watched all of Sliders. I've watched an episode here or there, but I've never sat down and, and you know, and watched, watched it. it. Yeah. It was funny. Uh, I was on a bit of a Jerry O'Connell kick, and it was the, what else has he been in that I haven't seen? There you go. <laughs> and I went from Crossing Jordan to Sliders. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, tonight's episode, for those who are watching, uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by Winking Owl Sweet Red Wine. I love that stuff. So I actually currently do not have alcohol because I was doing the, I, I I ate the foods and then it was the do I need to take the 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 medications that make me feel like I'm not going to be sick. Understood. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, never seen Arrested Development ran in the '90s, right? Well, John answered that real quick. Uh, Arrested Development is from the early 2000s, not the late 1900s. Why do you got to word it like that, John? The early 2000s and the late 1900s are practically the same thing, though. Yeah, especially though for uh, TV shows and music, those eras just kind of mm. blend right together. Especially about the 1998 to 2002, that four year span just like it's one bit so weird too. When you look back ball. at it now, and you're like, wait, what the what? We exactly. were wearing what and listening to what? I mean, I wasn't because I was a child. <laughs> uh, Drew O'Connor, can't remember my secret identity. I don't. I don't remember that either. Uh, let's see, I I know Bones like I know Beverly Crusher, huge fan. Mm -hmm. There you mm -hmm. go. My favorite uh, thing about Bones was that it was on during dinner, and we would sit in the living room, and then I'd want to watch Bones, and then my brother would get really disgusted and not want to wa watch it because we were eating. Ah, uh, uh, Grand Theory says uh, Sliders got canceled by Fox, but then brought back for a season two. Okay, okay. so canceled and brought back. Uh, the, the problem with the the bring back of Arrested Development was that we're like five years in the future. Um, <laughs> Michael Sarah, who plays George Michael, is no longer the young man in the show. He's now verging on the adult. He looks completely different. He acts, the acting is different uh, for a couple of different characters. And it's still funny, but it's not like something changed in the writer's room from the original four or five seasons to the two when it brought back to, to Netflix. A good show. I strongly recommend watching it. But if you watch these seasons in order, you will notice that there's a there's a pretty good size shift from when it goes from Fox to Netflix. Yeah. On how on how the the show was written. So, but yeah. Which is uh, actually also very much a a Netflix issue. Oh sure. Yeah. Um, probably not on your list because it's not in your alleyway, but. When Netflix brought back Gilmore Girls for the last, I almost added that to the list, season, honestly, or the Year in a Life. That's a totally different show than the original Gilmore Girls. I've actually heard that before because my daughter used to watch Gilmore Girls, but that's uh, um, but I almost added that one to the list. I, I didn't do it. To, uh, didn't do it, but I almost did. Uh, Granzier says uh, my secret identity was in the late '80s, or early '90s. He got zapped and got special superpowers. Hmm. So, uh, I did that with my husband too. But if I had Maddie watch it since she was a baby, she actually watches Bones to go to sleep. Awesome. Uh, does Freaks and Geeks count on this? So was that brought back somewhere? Uh, I think they brought it I don't back. Know. Netflix. Well, did they? okay. I don't know enough about Freaks and Geeks. I know it was a very popular show. Again, it's another show that I really didn't get much into. Um, Freaks and Geeks was amazing. Okay. I, I keep getting told that's a show I need to go back and watch and check out, but I've never. Uh, Scarif says, hey, everybody. What's up, bro? Uh, driving home from a long day. I'll check out the stream and it's you later tonight. Cool beans, buddy. No problem. Um, uh, Stranger Things is maybe the prequel to Freaks and Geeks. I could see that. I don't know enough about Freaks and Geeks, but if you guys say it is, I'm going to go with it. Yeah. What Jesse says, bro, right there. Drive safely. Do that. Do the thing. Uh, okay, moving on. 
Brooklyn Nine Nine is another one that was Gosh, originally oh, another, yeah, another Fox show. Uh, cool. That Fox kicked to the curb. Cool, 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 cool. cool. <laughs> Sorry, that has been that. that's been our latest binge watch. And you know the. Oh gosh. The the funny thing to me about Brooklyn Nine Nine, um, yeah, Jess, Jess never said she got into it. Um, the thing is, I never got into it at first either. No. And I was like, I don't know, this show's just okay. And then I find myself sitting there watching episode after episode <laughs> after episode, and going, how can individuals be this dumb? And then you're late, and then you just keep watching for something else ridiculously <laughs> stupid to happen, and then you laugh your butt off about it. Uh, yeah, and cheddar oh, the yeah, corgi. Yeah. So I had started watching it as an insomnia watch. So then it was the okay, okay. well, I can put this on because I'm gonna fall asleep during it anyway. Well, then John would wake up and then start watching it because he realized, oh wait, no, this show is hilarious. So then he asked me not to turn it on in the middle of the night. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Because he would wake up and then stay awake so he could watch more of it. But yeah. it is one of those shows that, like, even after... I haven't seen... I don't think I've been conscious through every episode of it yet. But I'm still going to watch it a hundred times. It's one of those things where I don't know that I've actually ever sat down going, I'm going to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine today. <laughs> but every time it's on, I'm like, well, hold on. Let me get a snack and a drink. I'll be right there. I have nothing against the show. It's fantastic. <laughs> Just, well, and like last night, John's like, John started. Again, right there. I know. Absolutely. John started Brooklyn Nine-Nine last night. And I'm like, well, crap. I love this episode. I have to stay awake for it now. <laughs> because it's the episode when they're trying to get back from San Francisco for the commissioner's interview. And the flights are canceled. And then they rent the, the RV. And then the RV explodes. I love the one where the Eric uh, Roberts was on like three or four episodes as you know as a guest arc, and he was mm -hmm. like the, like the big bad guy, and like, and yeah, and I, uh, uh, Sandberg's character has a chance to arrest him like three or four times, and each time Eric Roberts talks him out of arresting him because you know he's not the bad guy. It's just right. funny to me. And honestly, uh, like Terry Crews is just he's just a giant puppy of a human being. And right. I love him. Like, especially after I found out that he is also a big D&D &D fan. Yeah. I'm like, I love this man. He cracks me up, and his character in Brooklyn Nine-Nine is adorable. Plus, I believe he's from the Flint, Michigan area. He, so. I think so. Yeah. The other fun fact so, for, for... For those of you playing the home game, Flint's over here. Yes, so anyway. in the part that goes into your armpit. Anyway... <laughs> Well, it's the armpit. I mean, it's the armpit because it's gross. But like, if you're if you're cold and you put your hands like this, where Flint is is where right in your armpit. Superstar. <laughs> anyway, the other thing I was gonna say about Brooklyn Nine Nine <laughs> is I found out way later than I would like to admit is that Stephanie Beatriz, who is Rosa, is also the voice of Mirabel in Encanto. Oh. Like. Going from uh, Rosa to Mirabelle was just impressive. Yeah, she actually has a, a very soft voice. She and does. She, and, and she gruffs it up. So yeah, funny. she gruffs it up for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So, uh, There's like one yeah, episode so, where she's undercover or maybe it was after they got arrested and she's trying to pretend that... I think it was after they got, after they got arrested and she's on the bus trying to flee and she does the super soft baby voice and I'm like... <laughs> nice. All right, so that's Brooklyn Nine Nine. So so far we've gone through Firefly, Rest of Development. Now Brooklyn Nine Nine. Next up on the list that I don't remember is <laughs> Futurama. Futurama, which is the show like that its has 12th... been canceled and restarted and canceled and restarted and canceled and restarted. It's been restarted more times than my lawnmower meat bags. <laughs> yeah, because um... it was it was Fox, and then it was. Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. And then it was Hulu. And now it's Disney. Which, I mean, Disney owns Hulu, but still. Yeah. Right. Just, it, it's it's bounced around a lot. They make jokes about it, Ooh. even. Ooh, V was good, too. V. 
we're not going to disagree on that one, Granger. I okay. So as a kid, um, so I think that was in the early '80s when that when the original V came out. That show scared the crap out of me. The the, the woman who played Diane, or was it Diane or Diana? Either way, I think it was Diane, uh, the 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 lead of the lizard alien people. Mm-hmm. She scared me. She was scary. <laughs> But I mean, okay, so when that came out, I was like seven or eight years old, you know, and I remember watching that on TV. Um, but I always thought that show was really very cool, and I never understood why it went away. But I was, like I said, I was somewhere between the seven to nine range, let's say, when that came out. Um, and then it's had a couple of soft reboots where they did like mini series and things like that. Uh, Marina Baccarin was in the mm-hmm. second one, uh, but which anything that she's in, I'm like, give me a ticket. I will sit here and watch. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So the, no disagreement on V whatsoever. That was a, a show that needed more, more than it, uh, more than it got. Um, let's see. Unpopular opinion. I love both these, the 80 and 2000s. The 2000s was dark. Yeah, it was. And I think that they were trying to be edgier. I think that they were hoping to catch, a more modern audience because the eighties, if you go back and you watch the eighties V it's a little softer in storyline and uh, not as uh, it's like the death scenes and things that were in the eighties show were, were really toned down because it was early eighties on prime time. Right. I think, you know, especially you, you jump ahead 30 years and you know, 20, 30 years, and you bring it back, it's a different style audience. Primetime isn't as conservative as it used to be, and they're able to show more things. So I think that they got to the point where they felt like they could do those darker storylines. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. It's one of those things where you get these really good shows in, and they don't they don't take care of them well. They, they keep changing the dates around, dates and times, and but yeah. I understand that completely. But yeah, so Futurama, that's one of those things that's kind of enough said. That's been stopped and restarted a, a million billion times. Uh, next on the list is the show Community. I don't know if you guys ever watched this. This was one of my absolute favorites. But the show really went downhill after uh, Troy left with Donald Glover's character. Mm-hmm. Um, after they fired Chevy Chase because nobody wanted to work with him. Um, the thing is, Chevy Chase may be a, a again, he's one of those people that might be a human tool and really difficult to work with, but he was the perfect character on this show to, you know, just, he played that character so well. And, uh, um, let's see, she says, I know about the show community, but know nothing about it. Yeah. It's all about, uh, um, I'm circling my mouse over the screen, realizing you guys can't see where my mouse is moving, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, the gentleman in the front right, uh, he he loses his lawyer license, and he's got to go back to school to try and regain it, and he thinks that he can go through it easily. and uh, But, yeah, he can't. He's got to actually work his way through it. And so it's kind of interesting, you know, how he tries to slide through and skip through it, because that's what he's done all his life. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's really funny. Uh, the cast of characters was really well. Troy and Abed were probably my two favorite when the they had those two together. But like I said, once Donald Glover left the show and Troy's character was no more, there Abed was still there, but there wasn't the juxtaposition of those two characters being able to bounce off one another. And they tried bringing other characters in. They brought in another old guy to replace Chevy Chase, but it was a different style of character and it really just didn't work. But um uh, let's see. I remember I never got Chevy Chase's humorous comedy style. But this is going back to this. Mm-hmm. So I never really cared for him on SNL, but there are a few movies of his to yeah, this no day movies. that uh, even outside of I mean outside of National Lampoons that are my some of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Um, Sorry, European Vacation is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, you put on like uh, Spies Like Us, Three mm-hmm. Amigos. You know, and the thing is, I don't need Chevy Chase to carry the movie mm-hmm. for those. He's got some great one-liners. I do love the movie Fletch. Fletch lives is eh, at best, but 
yeah. So Chevy Chase is one of those guys that you, you either love him, hate him, or you go, eh, well, he's, he's not ruining the show. So, but... No. But yeah, so that's that's Funny Farm. Uh, not Funny Farm. Funny Farm. Oh, that was another <laughs> one of those. Uh, that's Community. And uh, yeah, so check that out. That was originally on, on uh, oh, I want to say it was on NBC and got picked up. I don't remember who picked it up. I think that was actually Yahoo. Yahoo was trying to, to start a, a, a virgin television thing. And they released a couple things and it just didn't. It was... Yeah, it was rough. So, anyway, that's community. Next, Stargate SG One. She's like, "Yeah, it happened." <laughs> I'm sorry, I've seen like eight episodes of that show. <laughs> well, you're not too far ahead of me, or behind me, I should say. Behind me, I watched a few episodes ahead. Not for a while. We were doing a Stargate SG One uh, review and recap. And we're hoping that at some point we'll be able to get back to it. But with everybody's life over the last few months, life has been lifing at an unbelievable life pace. That's a lot oh, of yeah. life. So uh, we feel good when we're able to get on here, have do a live show without anybody crying into the camera, and uh, get our interviews it's out on still Friday. Early. On it could happen. We got we got 29 minutes of this sucker left. It could still happen. Uh <laughs> Uh, Jesse says, there it is. That's exactly uh, MacGyver in space, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, I was very skeptical of the show when I first sat down to watch it, but I really grew to enjoy Richard Dean Anderson because uh, in the movie, his character is played by Kurt Russell, and I liked the way that Kurt Russell played it, and then Episode one of Stargate is a very large departure from the Kurt Russell mm -hmm. way of playing it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stargate SG-1 did get canceled. It was for a season or two off, and then it came back, and then it had a bunch of spinoffs, and, like Atlantis and was it Stargate Universe and Omniverse or herbivore or something i don't know there's like 40 stargate sequels out there um but he never heard of the planet melmex <laughs> oh, got any, hey you got any cats over there <laughs> oh, gosh. you two are special uh let's see super a popular opinion i never liked stargate sg1 i tried to watch it i had a roommate that loved the show i love the movie yeah and honestly I, I I think I'm at the point where I, I don't hate the, the TV show. I think, however, what it is for me is that I probably tolerate the TV show mm -hmm. because I love the movie so much. Because for I think for 30 years, I'd never watched the TV show. I'd only ever watched the movie. If I was going to watch something Stargate, I was going to sit down and I was going to watch the movie because I was like, well... Sometimes, Stargate. yeah, Stargate, that's Stargate. And I think sometimes, I think our minds go, well, they turned it into a TV show, and every one that we've ever watched for TV shows that been could come from a movie, I, don't, I can't really think of, man, that actually might be a good live show topic, is to talk about movies that were made into TV shows and talk about how successful they were or weren't. Mm -hmm. um, because there's quite a few that have, have gone that way. Like I think the most recent one that I can think of other than Stargate was um, Minority Report. Yeah. Which, it had Tom Cruise in the in the movie, so yeah. obviously it's going to be horrible. And um... <laughs> Bleh. Bleh. But I never, I, I never watched the TV show, so I have zero to offer uh, about that. Stargate Detroit 2026. <laughs> Uh, I think that's just the bridge that takes you over to Canada. It's not a new planet. <laughs> but they're so much more technologically advanced than us. Well, at least politer. Uh, let's see. I like Richard Dean Anderson, but I didn't like him in MacGyver. That show, jeez, was just too cheap. Okay, so I love MacGyver. 
I have okay, so that's a show that we could have included in this list. That was a cancellation because at the end of its show, mm-hmm. it had run its run and it was canceled. Uh, <clears throat> and then it was brought back, rebooted, shall we say? Uh, the Magru- MacGruber doesn't count. That's that's something different, but MacGruber. Um, but the, yeah, it was just. Uh, I never watched the reboot of, of the MacGyver show. I had zero interest in it because it didn't have Richard Dean Anderson. And right. one of the things I think, Granzer, honestly, you said here, the show was just too cheesy. I think it was intended it was to, be. to be cheesy. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be. That's how I, at least that's how I always took it, is that it was supposed to be something a little bit, a little bit cheesy. Uh, Tim and Kathleen, Stargate, Michigan, goes to the Great Lake Pyramid. Spinfoil had time. <laughs> I mean, there's enough stuff hiding in the lakes. You never know. Uh, who knows? Um, I don't know what I'm not wrong about, but I'll take it, Jesse. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Jim's like, totally I mean, out of context. I'm not wrong. Oh, darn. Uh, it's MacGyver. Hollycraft Original says it's, a guy, it's MacGyver. Yes, fix everything with duct tape. Come on. Not I mean, just duct tape. You had, to have, you had to have a paper clip, duct tape, and some chewing gum. And you could make an, an atomic bomb. At least according to MacGyver. What, what kind of gum? Does it have to be a specific kind of gum? Well, I mean, if you're doing it right, obviously it's going to be like Hubba Bubba or something. I was the, not wrong about Tom Cruise. There we go. It could be the fruit stripes gum that has flavor for a whole two seconds. Ooh, two seconds. You are giving it about a second and a half too much credit. <laughs> That that gum has just enough flavor so that it touches your tongue and you go, yeah. I think that was. Done. I think that was supposed to be cherry and gone. It's so good um, for just a second. Yeah. You're not wrong, John. That I'm not used to hearing that I'm not wrong. Uh, <laughs> he lives with two women. Of course, he's never told me not wrong. I mean, you will know more. You know all about that too, John. Because you know, I'm pretty sure you're. Uh, <laughs> There's Your small circles. barbarian there uh, keeps you in line. So. And his mother. Oh, you got one more than I do. <laughs> See, anyway. it's not just his wife and his child. Throw your mom into the mix, too, Tim. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Okay, <laughs> next topic. All love Juanita. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I want to say I like about MacGyver was the guest actors. Yeah, they had a ton of cool guest guest nods in that show, for sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going back to work so I can be right for about 15 minutes a day again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So those are the ones that we had pulled together off the list. And um, like I said, there's a whole lot of other shows that could have been included in these, including Jerry Ryan. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that could have been included here, and uh, they're not. But uh, that's a we can you know. Honestly, I think this is one of those topics you could do a you know once a month part two, yeah. part three, part four. Um, is Thundercats? It could oh, be yeah. absolutely Thundercats, Voltron. And you're right; they've each been at least Voltron. I Th- Thundercats has been rebooted at least twice. I think Voltron's on its third or fourth run. Uh, you could include He-Man and the Masters of the Universe in this list. You can include DuckTales. Woo! Uh, anyway, and you said DuckTales. I had to. It's not my fault. Um, it's just ingrained into us. You you heard the theme song more than once. It's It just gets stuck in your head. Mm-hmm. Oh, I watched a TikTok. You know, uh, you know, shiny. Woo! Uh, I watched a TikTok the other day, of, so, and I forgot to send it to you. I have to go back and try and find it now. Um, somebody did a like a hard rock, heavy metal version of uh, uh, of the Ducktales theme mm-hmm. song. Woo! Anyway, hey John, how's it going? You're welcome. <laughs> My like minded brain over there. Uh, but anyway, so that's that's it for that topic. There's something else we want to talk with you guys about tonight, and um, let's see. Uh, he Man and Master the Universe reboot was super solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nothing but good things I've heard. I have actually not watched the reboot of that, but I have heard nothing but good things about the reboot of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. 
including the refreshing of actors and who they're having plays different parts, you know, things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is now, are you ready for some aggressive positivity and blurry Kathleen? You were, you had it, you had it golden for like 40 minutes. And then it was just like, it was like, screw this. I'm taking my ball. I'm going home. I moved and it's like, eh, no, you don't, you don't matter anymore. <laughs> uh, Grandview says you both really love, I, you know, the thing is I want to watch it. Um, see Kathleen, it's windows. <laughs> so yeah. Up. And it's the camera you bought. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we are, we are focusing on aggressive positivity on the show. Now, one of the ways, why so, why so aggressive? Uh, by aggressive positivity. Because people suck. <laughs> that was not aggressive positivity. No, I am positive that people suck. Oh, oh, okay, my bad. My bad. Uh, but yeah, so one of the things is we've been noticing is that anytime somebody puts out comments about, uh, about anything, about any fandom lately, there's not one, not two, not three, a whole slew of people who are ready to say really mean, hurtful, negative things mm -hmm. uh, about that. Uh, yeah, let's put a smile on that face. Absolutely. Um, and so one of the things we've been doing, uh, so I, on Fridays, we have our, the FSF podcast, um, and Fridays and Mondays for our live shows and our interviews. Now, once a month, we have the FSF Podcast RPG, the, the logo you see on the on the other side of our, and we we try to be positive and have fun in that. But one of the things where we're really expressing this aggressive positivity, can you say, is in our sidebars. Now, every Wednesday morning, we are, or Thursday morning, rather, re, excuse me, every Thursday morning, we release a new sidebar. And we've done five of these so far. We'll have our sixth one coming up this week. Uh, the first one was, does Disney understand Star Wars? And what the intent of these is to, to go in and kind of take some of these topics and blow them up a little bit because conversations that are hard to have on the internet without somebody, oh, Disney sucks, Disney's this, mm -hmm. Disney's that, all these different things, denigrating the things that other people love and, and care for. Uh, so that was our first one. And then we went through, Does did Disney cancel the Chosen One prophecy because of the show, The Acolyte? People had all kinds of things to say about that. Fortunately, they were inaccurate in what they said about Disney canceling it. And John did a really nice job of explaining how the Chosen One prophecy still carries on with Anakin Skywalker. The next one after that was Star Wars is for everyone. The, oh boy. The amount of comments that we have gotten from this episode alone. Wow. Um, but, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Allow yeah. me to, to say, though. John did get hit comments. He did. So, we are expressing aggressive positivity. We are being positive. We are not toxically positive. We are not telling you that you have to like the things because we like nope. the things. We are not telling you there's nothing wrong with this thing. No, this is not a toxic positivity thing. And the people who have mentioned that in comments and in threads are poo, poo heads. And they need to stop being poo, poo heads because this is our show. We do what we want. If you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. We are telling you we like these things. We are okay if you like these things. We are happy if you like these things. Right. If you don't like these things... Shush. We're glad that you have the things that you like. We want you to to we want you to like it all. But if you don't, that's fine too. We're not saying, like Kathleen said, never once will you hear us say you have to like this because I like this, or you have to dislike this because we dislike this. Right. Tim, do you like Brussels sprouts? No, they're awful. That's fine. I like Brussels sprouts. I think they're really good if you will put them in your air fryer and then you put Parmesan cheese on them. No, that sounds disgusting. There we go. See? aggressive positivity. I am going to tell you the way I like my Brussels sprouts. Also, if you put bacon in them, it's delicious, but I'm not telling mm. you that you have to like them. I am not telling you that you have to eat them. It does seem like a good waste of bacon, though. No, it's actually... If, uh, if you enjoy Brussels sprouts, it's delicious. <laughs> if you don't, I understand. Exactly. 
And, and so I followed this one up from John. John did this one about Star Wars is for everyone because trying to show how Star Wars can attract different people with different shows. And people took that to mean that you have to like everything that Star Wars has put out. No. Um, yeah, that's not what Star Wars He's is for everyone means. You're not necessarily going to appreciate nubs. Exactly. But then I, I did the one. I super enjoy Andor. Exactly. Uh, we did the comp, the hashtag not my Star Wars because that was the comment we were getting. Well, that's not my Star Wars. That's not my Star Wars. And so we we kind of dove in. I dove in on this. So what does that mean? And uh, oh, oh, we did forget Battlestar Galactica for sure. Uh, complain about Star Wars is not regular TV. Agreed. Understand. Understandable. And Nubs is a galactic treasure. Nubs is adorable. I'm assuming that's one from the Young Jedi. The the blue one in the middle on John's last. Okay, time. I haven't watched it. I have no it's reason cute. to watch it. I don't have I don't have children of that age. But then again, I also watch Bluey, so that theory doesn't really hold. Uh, a place for you to get your grandson started on Star Wars. Deal. Okay. Uh, but we talked about not my Star Wars and what that means. And again, you don't have to like what I like. You don't have to dislike what I dislike. This is not a cult. This is Star Wars. You like what you like. You know, there was actually John and I were having this conversation about Star Wars not that long ago. That Star Wars is an all you can eat buffet. Yep. There is something for everyone. There are the kids' shows. There are the the more serious shows. There's the original trilogy. There's the prequels. There's the sequels. It's a buffet. Take from the buffet of Star Wars what you want. Leave the stuff of the buffet that you don't want. Somebody else might enjoy it. But don't tell somebody else that you can't eat that. Leave my Star Wars buffet alone. Exactly. Uh, and what John's saying there's a hundred percent right. I re- originally refused to watch Clone Wars and Rebels mm-hmm. both because they were kids shows, and now I love them. And the, I realize how much context they add to the live action shows. And honestly, if you look at those now and then you watch Young Jedi, Young Jedi is a kids show. Well, yeah, and I think the same way <laughs> of Resistance. Resistance is for a younger age group, not the same age group as Young Jedi. That's for an even younger mm-hmm. age group, but. Um, it doesn't mean they're bad shows. It just means that they're not made for me, and that's okay. Right. Um, and, and again, look how much I love Star Trek Prodigy. I do. If you haven't watched Star Trek Prodigy, by the way, and you're kind of on the fence of, golly, should I watch something Star Trek? Go watch Star Trek Prodigy, because then you're going to want to watch other Star Trek. Uh, go from that to, like, Lower Decks. Lower and then Decks to, hilarious. And then to maybe, like, Strange New Worlds. Uh, yeah. Good times. Yeah. Um, uh, Grand says, I wonder if these same viewers had the same disdain for the Clone Wars, the enemies. Probably. I did. I did. Um, someone claimed online tried to tell me that no one ever hated the prequels. Oh, oh my sweet summer youngling. Were um, they not alive? If The only way you think that the, the prequels didn't get hate is if you weren't alive and you didn't know what was going on. Ahmed Best right. almost took his life. Yeah. Jake Lloyd almost took his life. Jake Lloyd quit acting and had a schizophrenic break because yeah. of what yeah. toxic fans did to him. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that um, Ahmed Best has come back at all to Star Wars says more about him than anything else. The fact that Hayden Christensen was willing to come back after the oh, hate yeah. he got. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping that at some point the hate that John Boyega and Kelly Marie Tran and Daisy Ridley is getting and all, all this will blow over and that that at some point it will be like with the prequels and they will get the love that they deserved because yes. people forget and this is one of the things I talk about in this this episode here is that people forget that these are just paid actors who are doing what the script saying what the script told them to say doing what the director told them to do And if you're going to have any issue with the way that something is portrayed on screen, go after the writers. Go after the directors. Do not go after the actors. It's not the actor's fault. The actor's doing what they're paid, what they were told to do in in their contract. It's really not. It shouldn't be that this hard to figure out, but people have are struggling with it. And then after Not My Star Wars, I did this one. Was it something we said? Because of the number of comments that we were getting, the number of hate comments that John was getting, the number of oh, you guys are idiots comments and you guys know what you're talking about comments. Um, 
all that different type of stuff. Uh, the Mandalorian, uh, it's still on Disney Plus. They've done three seasons. There was plans for a fourth season. I don't know if the fourth season is going to happen right now because there's talks that they're, they're going to skip the fourth season and go straight to a movie. So it is um, currently filming, but we don't know if they're filming for the movie or filming for a fourth series. Right. It's being kept pretty much under wraps because everything that happened with the Acolyte, I think that they're kind of, and, you know, honestly, ranks. I don't blame Disney for putting things under lock and key when they're trying to do what they think we want. They're trying to give us more Star Wars. And that's what we all ask for is more Star Wars. We want more stories. We want something outside of the Skywalker saga. Mm -hmm. And then all they do is bitch and moan about what they're given. Right. Because as John and I have pointed out many times, the answer for Star Wars is more Star Wars. It if you is. don't understand you something, take a breath, take a beat, sit back, wait for it to come out, because it will come out eventually, and they'll make more Star Wars that answers and the question. The you thing can that you were fix curious. and fill so many plot issues. And that's one of the things about sci-fi and about fantasy is that you can do all of these wonderful things because it's a galaxy far, far away with a belief system that doesn't exist here we can change things it's right. gonna be fine he's not yeah. canon nobody cares <laughs> man my friend doesn't like you i don't like you either we're wanted men i love that life ah oh, star wars uh so anyway so that was that was last week's and that's had a few fun comments on it as well and i can only imagine what next week's or this thursday's is going to be because this is the topic for Thursday. Oh boy. Damn the man. Save the acolyte. Oh no. So, so yeah. Um it's gonna be an interesting it's about an eight minute about an eight minute video. And we go and we talk about the things about the acolyte, the reasons why the acolyte needs a season two or longer. This is all I'm going to say is, if you don't like the acolyte, that's fine. But you can leave it on the stop. buffet for the rest of us. Yeah, stop crapping on everybody else. I'm so tired of, of the. Uh, uh, I got called a beta male simp because I liked the acolyte. Yep. Uh, because I didn't have a problem with the fact that this was a show whose leads didn't look anything like me, and I was okay with that. But That's the people fine. who aren't, by the way, I'd like to point out in, in the couple different places where I've posted things for people to go and if they want to try and save the Acolyte, either with um, a petition on change.org or a way to go to DisneyPlus.com and, and uh, tell Disney that you want more of the Acolyte. Any of the people who had negative things to say out of the... 47 reactions I got on one post. Uh, 22 of them were laughing emojis. Yeah. Can I Out also those... say... Sorry. Oh, one second. Let me make yeah. this point and then Sorry. you can do whatever you want. Out of those 22, 21 of them were white males. I would guesstimate between the age of 18 and 30. So they're mad because this show wasn't about a straight white male. God forbid it had somebody, a you know, person of color in the lead, and then it had two Asian men in the lead. We had we had Asian men and a black woman. We had people of color in the lead. That's you know, and they're like, oh, this you know, because the story clearly wasn't written for them, and so they're having big problems about that. Can I, um, on that note though, can I just say that if you're watching things that only have straight white males or straight white women. You're on the wrong side of history. Uh, friends, we like to call that the dark side. There, there was an attempt of making it so there were only straight white people. That is the wrong side of history, guys. You do not want to be on that side. It's right. okay for there to be color. Oh, we're hoping that they will, Jesse. Uh, yeah, major publications like Forbes and Rolling Stone are talking about why canceling the show was a really bad move. And that's true. Uh, this is interesting. Save the Acolyte, 47,000 signatures. Don't save it, only 7,000 signatures. Hmm. 
And if people who gave my husband's hate comments want to give me hate comments for saying things like that, have at it. Do it. <laughs> Engage with us on YouTube. It just makes us stronger. There you go. Uh, let's see. Danny from Comics and is not a fan of the Acolyte and expressed why she didn't and was called a bigot. Oh, man. See, I don't have a problem with somebody saying why. Okay, so I've actually seen some of the stuff that Danny has talked about. And the the difference between what Danny's issues are and what a lot of the other regurgitated comments are is that she actually has a, a platform that she's speaking from that makes sense. She's not just stepping up on somebody else's platform going, yeah, what the other guy said, which is basically all these regurgitated comments of hate and what they are. Uh, but Danny, if you have problems with the, with the way the story was written, I have some, I have, I'm okay. I'm not saying that the show is perfect, by the way. I have some issues with how the story was written. Episode three with all the singing and the uh, power of one, power of two, all that stuff. Yeah, that was a little campy to me. I didn't understand it. I didn't really appreciate that episode, but it did. Looking back at the episode, if you took the time to watch all the episodes, it actually makes sense. And even though I don't care for the singing and all that stuff. But yeah, Danny's Danny's points are not wrong. Some of the acting was a little wooden in spots. The guy who plays Master Soul, though, by the way, Chef's Kiss, he's amazing. Um, I can't remember his name. He's a Korean actor who learned English in four months, by the way, so he could do this this show. Yeah. Uh, Granzier says... They said if it if they just won't have made it so woke, we wouldn't have a problem. They'd rather have tried Jared being stalked the entire episode. <laughs> you know the thing is the people who say that Star Wars has Star Wars has gone woke have forgotten uh have forgotten that Star Wars has been woke since nineteen seventy seven. Yeah. It's been woke since the, the opening credits of the very first movie. That's what these shows are about going against big government with a woman in princess leia was the head of the rebellion you guys need to listen to george lucas more and what he says and how he describes these movies they've always been woke they've always had a woman in the lead just anyway i could go on this could be like me ranting and raving and all these things for for years but yeah uh correct me if i'm wrong didn't the lead actor in accolade tweet if you're straight white male um wait bigot male if you're a bigot, yeah, I don't know if they said that, but that they're not wrong because you're gonna have a, if you're a straight white male who's a bigot, you're gonna have a real hard time with some of the storylines and some of the people. Uh, it's like those who say Star Trek has gone woke. Clearly, you never saw a dang episode. Again, people need to pay attention to their shows, not just what they think they took out of their shows. But that's gonna come out on Thursday morning, and like I said, it's about an eight minute episode. And uh, John's working on that edit right now. So, or I think he started working on that edit. But anyway, it'll be out Thursday. Tomorrow. Yeah. Either way, uh, it'll we'll have it ready for you guys on Thursday. But sorry uh, if I'm not like super engaged at the moment. My uh, computer screen has gone completely black and said that there is no HDMI signal. But it's still. Well, I can see you. I can see you just fine. It's just the like I have no screen now. This is weird. Uh, let's see. I think that was about part was about Star Wars that was missed. Yeah, it's. I will say that the one of the thing, before we move on to anything else, real quick, the one thing that I really did uh, enjoy and appreciate. John says, "Gah, Windows." Um, I I don't know what's going on. The one thing that I really do enjoy and appreciate about the Acolyte is a. It's a story set in the High Republic area. It's the first one that we've gotten in the High Republic area era in in uh, live action. I love the fact that we're getting introduced to new places, people, and things that were not anywhere in, in Star Wars before. I love the fact that we're getting expanded universe storylines and things that people and things brought in. There's such area for growth here and expansion that if people could get out of their own way and let the show just be a show, mm -hmm. it would be fantastic. That doesn't mean you have to like it. If you don't like it, don't watch. It's it's that simple. It's fine. Um, there's plenty of other things out there for you to choose from, ins even inside of Star Wars. If there's something you don't like, you don't like these three movies, well, guess what? There's like nine or ten other movies you can choose from. So, um, 
Yeah. I have a screen Any, again. <laughs> I see that. John wants to know how you fix the display. I turned it off and turned it back on again. Ah, uh, yes, computers. Uh, Kathleen, you are like Gates doing that thing and seeing disengage us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dude, acting in the dark. She's doing the show in the dark. We'll Holy fix God. it in post. You know, oh, it yeah. has been such an absolute no post. dumpster fire over here today. I'm sorry. Understood. But anyway, like I said, that comes out on Thursday. Um, but yeah, go watch that on Thursday. Please engage with us and tell us what you think about the points made in the uh, Damn the Man, Save the Acolyte. We'll also have a link for the change.org uh, petition listed there below in the notes for that episode. But also know uh, that in your engagement with us, you're not going to change our, change us. You're not going to, you're not going to scare us. You're not going to make us think that you, that Star Wars is awful and that things are terrible. If you want conversely, to angry, if you want to a angry comment, okay, have fun with that. If that's where I, you I, need to vent your frustrations. Yeah. And, and conversely, we're not necessarily looking to change your opinion either. No. We're just we're just expressing why we feel the way we do and why we think this needs to continue. So it's an opinion, and we we respect that. You and know, in, I, in the show, I in in that episode, I talk about why we need to talk about these things respectfully with one another. I have a saying about opinions, Tim. Would you like to know my opinion saying? I'm pretty sure I know it, but sure, go ahead. Well, let's let the rest of the internet know that opinions are like buttholes. I know that everybody has them, but we don't necessarily need to see yours. And if you feel that you don't need to see ours, then look away. There you it's go. Okay. Uh, where does Disney take Star Wars now? Do they appease the vocal fans or do they stay the course? Well, right now they're appeasing the vocal fans. Um, but they're paying attention to the wrong fans that are vocal. That's the problem. They're paying attention to the angry mob instead of the people who are not willing to be part of an angry mob and want to just express their their opinions peacefully but and again unfortunately in the world that we live in anger is the loudest thing that is what's heard over everything else yep and yep. that is such an issue with humans as an entire human race so that's just yeah me. but anyway like i said that comes out on thursday i think we could we could rant for a whole hour or more on that alone uh thir so last week friday we we released our interview with jonathan Schacht who is from the Blue Ridge series and also one of my all-time favorite movies, That Thing You Do. He's Jimmy Mattingly. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I quit. Anyway, uh, really cool interview with him. Uh, has some really cool uh, stories about things that happen behind the scenes on That Thing You Do, even how he won the part of James Mattingly uh, when he was auditioning in front of Tom Hanks. So it's really kind of a cool story. And I uh, talks about also... He's a dyslexic, and he talks about how he's used that to his advantage to help him with his script. So really kind of cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then episode 200 comes out this Friday, and this is one of the coolest interviews I've been able to be part of in, in quite a while. Dr. Chris Kempshaw. We didn't put it in the listing there, but he is a doctor. Um, John, our editor, says episode 200 is amazing. I, I thought so, too. Chris is uh, amazing to talk to. Uh, he's a Star Wars historian. He's a World War I historian. And he has talked about the rise and fall of, of all these different countries and world powers and different things. And There's he a lot takes of overlap that, there. Yeah. He takes that same style of discussion to the Galactic Empire in his book there, The Rise and Fall of the Galactic Empire, which is, by the way, I, I thought I had it here with me. Actually, it must, it must be at the shop. I'm doing this from home tonight. But that book chef's kiss it is a page turner it's not a boring historical book it's written it's written like a story but with historical content in it and it references uh, a previous star wars uh guest that we had Kristen baber who is the editor-in-chief of starwars.com she's referenced in the book uh, with a code name if you can it's not that hard to find but and the wife um, of yeah uh no the wife of r2d2 no, is not mentioned right. in the book uh, but he also did um, um, the history and politics uh, of, of the Galactic Empire. He's done the battles that changed the galaxy. All three of those books are worth checking out. Chris Kempshaw is a huge, huge Star Wars nerd, and he's a Star Wars historian, and it's, well, it's just so much fun. 
Uh, and maybe so, soon yeah. we'll actually have interviews with people other than just Tim doing them. <laughs> it, you know, it's a distinct possibility. I hope. Uh, Schedules I hope. have been dumb. Have we mentioned that life is lifing very hard? So, All over the place. Yeah, absolutely. And my kid starts school next week. Um, are you talking about... <laughs> I can't even read this. Joke. Back to the robosexuals. No. No, no. Uh, Bonnie Burton. Uh, I'm getting Star Wars people mixed up because there's a lot in my brain. Yeah, Jesse, I figured you'd understand for sure. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, but yeah, these are all the places that were available. Well, some of the places, of course, uh, YouTube, Patreon. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods, wherever you get your favorite audio podcast from. Trust me, uh, we're there. If not, let us know, and we'll make sure that we get on that location. We but, especially uh, love Good Pods, though, because Good Pods loves us. They they take good care of us. What can I say? Uh, but, yeah, I think that pretty much concludes us for tonight. Thanks. Any parting thoughts? I have a first grader. Yeah, I got a senior. How, how do I have a first grader, Tim? I don't know. I, and I'll only have, but I may have had some wine tonight. She, she was 18 months old when the pandemic started. How do I have a first grade? Sorry. I understand. I understand. <laughs> it only gets rougher from here. I know. And on that note. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Live long and prosper and do all the things. Yeah. Uh, I am not a senior citizen. Jesus. <laughs> He's really not that much older than you, John. Okay, shut up. Okay, bye. I meant that to John. <laughs> you can keep talking. We're just going to start the video. Copyright 2024 FSF Podcast. Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by FSF Podcast. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at info at fsfpopcast.com.